Okay, so we're trying to find the um, absolute maximum and minimum of uh, this uh, polynomial. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little uh, division here. And uh, we'll put the steps over here. And I'm just going to summarize them. Um, but the first step um, that uh, you're going to do is you're going to find the uh, critical points. And so remember, to find the critical points, you find where the derivative is equal to 0 and uh, does not exist. So that's the first thing we do. So uh, let's find the derivative. So this is a pretty easy derivative to find. It would be minus 2x plus 10. Uh, we set it equal to 0, so there's no spot where um, this is undefined. And we would get that x is equal to 5. OK, so this is the only uh, critical point that we have. And um, so then the second step is uh, you're going to plug in and compare. We're going to compare the y values for the uh, endpoints. So we're going to plug in the endpoints and the critical points. Now in this case there's only one, but if there was more than one then we would do that. So um, step two is you basically grab the endpoints which are three and eight and then you're gonna grab the uh, critical point five and we're just going to plug each one of those into the function and the biggest will be the absolute maximum and the smallest will be the absolute minimum. Easy, right? Okay, so let's do it. So if I plug in 3 into my function, I would get minus 3 squared plus 10 times 3 plus 43. And this is equal to 64. OK, uh, the next one, if I plug in 8, I would get negative 8 squared uh, plus 10 times 8 plus 43, which is equal to 59. And then the last one, x equals to 5, I have negative 5 squared, be careful with that negative, make sure you don't put it inside of that parentheses, plus 10 times 5 plus 43, which is 68. Okay, so then you just look at all three of them and you say, okay, well, the absolute maximum is this one, 68, and it's located at x equals to 5. And the absolute minimum is going to be 59. And it's located at the right endpoint, x equals to 8. OK, so here we're trying to find the absolute maximum and minimum of uh, this function, uh, sine of x times cosine of x, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Um, so. Um, first step, remember, is to find the critical points. So that means that I have to find the first derivative. So the derivative of um, this function, I have to uh, use the product rule. So I've, I have the derivative of the first, which is uh, cosine of x times the second, leaving it alone, cosine of x plus sine of x, and then times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to change this to a minus sign. Okay. So um, this is equal to uh, cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. Now um, you can solve it like this. Um, you know, we, we set it equal to 0. Right, and uh, we want to solve this uh, this function. Um, 
so but you might notice that cosine squared minus sine squared well that's equal to uh, cosine of uh, 2x that's the double angle identity and so we can just solve uh, this one now we know that uh, cosine um, no matter what's inside of here so um, we have this 2 here but we know that for cosine to equal to 0 um, it has to equal to uh, pi over 2 and since it's uh, 2 times x I'm gonna keep going even though my interval goes pat goes only up to pi over 2 I'm gonna go past it to the next value um, because remember that this 2 here makes cosine go twice as fast so I might be able to catch uh, that one okay so then uh, what I uh, do is remember you set um, 2x equal to pi over 2 which means that x is going to equal to pi over 4 so that's one of the values and then if I uh, solve 2x equals to 3 pi over 2 I'll get x is equal to 3 pi over 4 so notice that um, in this case even though uh, cosine is going twice as fast um, this 3 pi over 4 is past pi over 2 so this isn't actually one of the values I'm going to use but you always want to go past um, whenever you have either a double um, double or a triple angle inside of the um, the trig function so my only critical point is pi over 4 okay so then remember um, what you do is you plug in um, your critical point so you compare the value of the critical point or points and your endpoints and what you're trying to uh, find is the y value and so um, you basically do a little comparison we're going to compare um, and we we're looking at the y value so we're gonna plug in x equals to 0 x equals to pi over 2 those are my endpoints and then x equals to pi over 4 which is my only critical point and so remember basically these are all the possible spots where the absolute maximum and minimum can occur and so I'll plug in all three of these into the original function and that will give me um, I'll just pick the biggest and the smallest and those would be my maximums and minimums so um, let's do that so here I have f of 0 which is sine of 0 times cosine of 0 and that's just equal to 0. Now if I plug in pi over 2 I get sine of pi over 2 times cosine of pi over 2 and that's also equal to 0. And last but not least I plug in pi over 4 and I get sine of pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 4 and each one of these are both exactly the same this is simply root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 which is equal to 2 over 4 or 1 half so then you go okay well my absolute maximum between these three values is y equals to one half so this is the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum there's two spots where you find the absolute minimum it's the absolute minimum is zero and it occurs at both x equals to zero and x equals to pi over two